Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. So let's uh, have a look here. What do we want to do today? How about we try a mono black control list with the addition of Thoughtseize? And then maybe we get to play Karn the Great Creator as well alongside Mastermind's Acquisition to make for a nice wishboard. So we can get Graftigger's Cage, which is pretty well positioned, as well as with Acquisition getting potential answers for Feel of the Dead. Could be fun. I should maybe start by importing my Mono Black Veto deck from a couple weeks ago. Maybe I still have it somewhere. Yeah, that's the one. So let's clone this. It's essentially going to be the Exquisite Blood Veto deck without the Exquisite Blood Veto combo and with a few different cards in it. We'll use this as a starting point. Then one interesting new card we could also try in this deck is the Cascading Cataracts as a potential way of enabling Golos. Let's say we have a lot of lands but no Chromatic Lantern. Then we can potentially get a Cataracts to still enable Golos. It's not very mana efficient, but it could be okay. So I could see one copy being fine. I wanted to try Karn as well. Karn a Great Creator, which can potentially uh, search up some cards as well. Usually I don't want Castle when I'm playing Cabal Stronghold, because we really want to maximize the number of swamps we have. All right, so this is 56 cards. Another new card we can play is Guardian Idol as another 2-mana ramp artifact. Of course, we gotta play Mindstone, as every respectable historic deck should. Probably playing like 25 lands, that might be okay. 3 Strongholds, 1 Cataracts, 3 Golos. We've got Extinction Event as our main deck sweeper. Uh, 3 Karns. Don't know if we want 3 or 4 Acquisitions. And then Lantern for more ramp. Bit of removal with Murder Strider, eliminates Cry. Don't know if we need Murder Strider, but it is flexible. And then of course we want to add Thoughtseize, so... Four of those. Let's say we cut uh, Murder Striders. Four Guardian Idol might also be too many. Possible we just want two of them. And then we'll have to work on the sideboard to get with Acquisition and Karn. So this is 59 cards. I don't have a ton of card draw. We only have Tome, and then we're kind of relying on the search effects to provide a bit of card advantage, I guess. Uh, I guess this list could also run a, a couple Ugins. Like two Ugin the Spirit Dragon in the main deck has an extra win condition, especially now that we have additional ramp with Guardian Idol. It makes a lot of sense. So yeah, something like this could be a good starting point. Now do I want Eliminate? This was pre-Goblins, I think. But I probably want to swap Eliminate for Heartless Act. It's just better against the Goblins since it can kill Krenko. I don't mind the split of the Sweepers, couple Cries, couple Extinction Events. Could also play Languish, but we've got one in the sideboard. And then could potentially play two Karns instead of three. Let's do that. Two Karns, four Acquisitions. And then in the sideboard, we want to add a few artifacts for Karn. Of course, Cage is the main one. Spyglass. I probably don't need Ugin in the sideboard if I have it in the main deck. One Ulamog is still fine. And then I want to get Massacre Worm. Massacre Worm, also a creature we could play in the main deck, actually. Maybe I'll make that swap. Like, play one Massacre Worm in the main deck. And cut... Maybe one Lantern, because Massacre Worm is pretty well positioned against the field decks. And I could even put a second one on the sideboard. And then, what else? Tormod Script as Graveyard Hates? Sure. Can maybe replace Cling to Dusts. Um, the rest is still good, even though Thoughtseize kind of replaces it for the most part. We've got Cast Down. As more spot removal in case Heartless Act doesn't work. Necromancia is good against Field as well, potentially. Virulent Plague. Josu as a finisher. Don't know if that's necessary. Usually just getting Ulamog is better. So Josu is definitely cuttable. 
and then both Massacre Worm and Massacre Girl. Don't know if we need both. And then Ritual and Languish to complement Extinction Events. And then Obliterator can also be good against Red Decks. So do I have enough current targets here? Probably not. I probably want a few additional artifacts. So let's cut the Massacre Girl and the Josu. And then I can get two more artifacts. What are some good artifacts to get? I guess uh, the statue. Got for a statue, which we can also ramp out. And what are some other good artifacts? I guess Ratchet Bomb to deal with the uh, zombie tokens. Immortal Sun, although it does shut down my own Ugin as well. Probably want one Stone Coil Serpents. Amulet of Safekeeping. If we can get two of them in play, it shuts down the zombies. That might be too slow. But it's an interesting card to consider, since it doesn't die to Ugin's Minus. Banefire as a finisher is an option. Could also play Torment of Hailfire now, actually. Solemn Simulacrum. I guess I donate Solemn just as a value creature that I can get if I want to keep ramping towards Ugin and Massacre Worm. Immortal Sun, maybe. But we've got Spyglass already. Gift could be interesting, but we don't have a ton of main deck creatures. And I guess Platinum Angel against some decks is also game over, so I probably want one. Alright, so I need to cut three cards to make room here. So maybe the rest can go now that we have Thoughtseize in the main. Both Crypt and Cage might be redundant, but they do slightly different things, like Crypt can work against Godfarer's Gift, whereas Cage cannot. I could see Castdown being redundant. It's possible that I don't need Ritual and Languish and Extinction events. Like one of those is probably unneeded. I don't necessarily need Massacre Worm in the side if I have one in the main, but I could see myself wanting two copies. Thought Distortion seems okay. Probably between Cast Town and one of the four mana sweepers. Let's kind of think about the popular decks. So Ritual of Soot needs to deal with Uro, zombie tokens, and goblins mostly. I guess Ritual gets Uro, whereas Languish doesn't, but Languish gets uh, Krenko, where Ritual of Soot doesn't. Ritual of Soot can get Spirit Dancer if it's not indestructible, whereas R Languish could be kind of too small. Extinction Event gets most of those cards, that's why it's in the main deck. Alright, let's cut the Ritual of Soot and then probably the Cast Down. Because if we can cast or acquisition, we usually have the mana to play some more expensive removal, so we don't necessarily need to get a two mana one. Alright, pretty happy with this. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight artifacts to get with Karn, and then we've got seven additional non-artifact spells to get with acquisition, which of course can also get stuff from the main deck. The one thing we don't have is a way of like making use of the thought seize in the late game, if uh, it's stuck in our hand and the opponent's already empty-handed. We don't have any, like, discard outlets, really. But I don't know if there's any viable ones. I guess, like, Crib Breaker's probably too slow. Pack Rats, I guess. I guess now with Pack Rat, I should try a Pack Rat Thoughtseize deck at some point. Because that's one of the main things that was keeping down the Pack Rats. I didn't know this card existed. That's interesting. Rankles, not really all that great. Yeah, like Liliana, we don't really care too much about dealing damage to the opponent with a plus one. So there's nothing really for us. Bag of Holding seems slow, but that's okay. Yeah, Torment of Hailfire could also be an okay finisher. My guess is Ugin is probably just better. I don't know, maybe I should have one Torment in there just for fun. So what am I cutting for Torment of Hailfire? Probably not one of the artifacts, so maybe Thought Distortion, maybe the Phyrexian Obliterator, although it's kind of my pet card. Although I don't recommend it as an actual pet. Alright, let's maybe cut the Obliterator. Hmm, this hand's pretty slow. But I guess I'll try it. It's a field deck. I could wait until turn 4 to go Lantern Thoughtseize. Like, what 2-mana card am I super interested in taking? Like, Explore doesn't matter too much. I want to take their payoff cards, their... 
five mana ramp card basically. Ooh, they have two of them. That's unfortunate. Well, Acquisition can get the enchantment that kills all tokens. Hopefully they don't get a blast soon. They got a blast soon. So now what? Could play Golos. I mean, it's possible Inquisition just get, ends up getting a Massacre Worm. So I don't hate just ramping with Golos here. And get a Stronghold. I've got a Lantern already for the ability, so we don't need to get the Cataracts. Right, drawing a swamp is good. So I don't have enough mana to get a Massacre Worm and play it, but we do have Cry to kinda wipe the board for now. Five, six, seven, eight. What can Karn get? So a three mana on Cry leaves five mana, so I can still go Mindstone into Karn. Or I can just Acquisition for Massacre Worm, but maybe I end up getting something else if they don't make a ton of zombies next turn. I guess we'll see here. Could also get a Ratchet Bomb. Platinum Angel doesn't do much if they have an Ulamog. Could get Spyglass to name Ugin. But we also have Ugin. Or Spyglass for Blast soon. Yeah, actually, that makes sense. I still don't think Virulent Plague is going to be very reliable, because my opponents could still play an Ugin or Ulamog to get rid of it, so I don't want to count on it too much. Alright, so if I have the mana for Massacre Worm, that would be great. Can always get a Ratchet Bomb. So... 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I'm one short. Could of course activate Golos and hope to hit a Massacre Worm. I guess that still works. And then if we don't get anything amazing, I can still... get a Ratchet Bomb and blow up all the zombies. And then next turn I'll be able to get Massacre Worm and use it. I will rid you of your corruption. And then uh, could also play Spyglass, naming Blast Zone here.
Could also name Arch of Raska. It's kind of close. Probably name Blast Zone. And we'll pass. Alright, so there's a lot going on here, but seeing the upside of having Karn and Acquisition to kind of pick and choose whatever we need. Let's see what other lands they get. But now Massacre Worm should be pretty strong. They might just be dead here, actually. I guess Bag of Holding and Sideboard could be fun, yeah. Good point. I count 11 zombies. That's 22 damage, chat. Got one in the sideboard as well. At least we got to see the animation. No, that was fun. I could try one bag of folding in the side. That does kind of solve the Thoughtseize issue I mentioned earlier. And then what do I cut for it? This is a difficult part. Maybe Solemn. I kind of like the idea of Solemn though. Maybe Thought Distortion. Like, there's not that many control decks being played right now because they are pretty terrible against Field of the Dead. So it's possible we don't need this. Although it could be fun if we ever encounter like a a new Perspectives combo deck, or something similar. Oh, let's cut the Thought Distortion. We'll try this. Do I prefer best of one or best of three? When I'm testing out decks, I prefer best of one because it's faster. I get more experience against a wider variety of archetypes. Once I like get a deck that I'm happy with, of course, best of three gives me more in-depth gameplay. Especially like if I'm getting the deck in paper as well. It's a pretty big investment, so best of three gives you more for your money. But, uh, so against goblins, what's my game plan? Heartless Act, the Krenko. Acquisition can maybe get a Massacre Worm if they make a ton of goblins, if I'm not dead yet. Or we can just try and get an Ugin, ramp into Ugin, I guess, is a reasonable strategy. So yeah, I think the game plan is work our way up towards like an Ugin or try and get a sweeper to make sure we don't die right away. Well, there's Ugin. Now if I keep Ugin, I might miss my land drop. Although what I can do is... I think I'll still keep it. And then... I can take my draw step, draw the Ugin, and then I can scry, play Tome, like assuming there's a land on top here. Yeah. Play Tome, 
draw with the tomb, and then I can still heartless act. Either the chieftain, if they play Krenko or something else. Although it's probably going to be the chieftain. And then I should put some more upkeep stops. Most professional players do still buy all the cards themselves. I think it's kind of a myth that they somehow get all their cards for free. They're just heavily invested players with a big collection. Sometimes they'll manage to trade a few cards or borrow them from friends, of course, but... Alright, so Krenko means... I could Heartless Act the Chieftain. If I let Crank Resolve makes three tokens, I'm taking uh, 10 damage here. That's quite a lot. So yeah, let's just kill the Chieftain. So... Let's cry. Swamp. So Swamp means this generates one additional mana. So I'll have four, five, six, seven. Still one short of Ugin. But I can Masterminds for Gravedigger's Cage to prevent Muxus from going crazy. So I think I still keep Swamp. Four, five, six, seven. So yeah, let's assume I acquisition. What's the best thing I can get? I could also get the three mana enchantment that kills all tokens. Which isn't a crazy idea, but then it's gonna die as soon as I Ugin minus. So I kind of prefer getting Craftigger's Cage. And then I'm likely just playing Ugin next turn to minus. Which one get rid of the cage? So let's search our outside the game. Yeah, this deck isn't easy to play because there's so many permutations with the search effects. Hopefully we don't die to just Cranko making a whole bunch of tokens with another Chieftain. And then next turn I can wipe the board with Ugin. Should be able to find another land. I didn't really want to say Ringleader, because that lets them refuel post-Ugin. But it's just gonna smash. I can draw with Tomb. And then Scry with this one. Look for lands. Gain 4. Swamp, I'll keep. So I should be able to even play the Thought Seize 2 here. Thought Seize you. No Muxus, but not a Ringleader I probably need to take. Minus four. No haste goblins that we know of. This can only deal damage to creatures. Alright, so we've got a shot. No haste creature on top, that's good. So I think I do scry, because I just need to find some action here. Another acquisition would be great, or a Karn. And then next turn I can just draw by paying two mana, since we've got a ton of mana now. So... Let's draw.
All right, I'm a bit flooded now. So Ugin can minus two, that seems fine. Or I can plus on the Snoop. I guess plusing on the Snoop is safe here, unless they cycle into something good, because we know they're drawing a, a mountain. And then plus two is the same loyalty we lose from Instigator. So yeah, let's take out Snoop. I guess never mind, they do have Castle. Yeah, I guess given the castle, I need to minus two. My greatest creation. Cycles gem palm. We do get to see what's on top at least. Ooh, Krenko. Right, let's pass the turn and then hope to top deck some goodies. Can still sack the Mind Stone. Maybe shouldn't have tapped the Mind Stone there to activate Stronghold. That was probably a mistake. All right, so start by making some mana. Draw with Mind Stone. Golos, now that is nice. Uh, what do I want to get here? Probably just another Stronghold. Can't activate Golos this turn, that's fine. And then I want to keep the Guardian Idol untapped so I can block with it if needed. Deal 3 to Krenko. And now we should be in great shape. Can protect Ugin with Idol. And we can activate Golos next turn to try and close out the game. And Cage should stop any Moxa shenanigans. And our opponent explodes, sweet. So we managed to dismantle the goblin deck piece by piece. That was fun. On the draw, this hand's a little on the slow side. If we're facing an aggressive creature deck, this might be too slow, but I'll still try it. Another field deck. Again, I'm gonna wait on Thoughtseize until a little bit later, try and snipe an Hour of Promise. Thought Seize is Thought Seize. I guess that's the risk of not Thought Seizing turn one. But we drew Mind Stone, so all is good in the world. Well, they did see the Massacre Worm, so let's see how that affects their play here. Uh, could Karn get a Ratchet Bomb right away? Can develop my mana with Lantern. Not sure what to get with Acquisition at this point. Yeah, let's just play Lantern. Means I can already play Massacre Worm next turn if needed. Hour of Promise on top of their deck. Another Karn. So Massacre Worm is tempting. Although I could wait until they make a few more zombies. But I can still Acquisition for a second Worm out of the sideboard. Which they might not expect. Yeah, let's do that actually. Wait one turn, let them go crazy with Oracle. Get another Worm. And then we'll go back to back worms. It's 
seems better than plague. Another field on top of their deck here. Let's see if they play it. Opponent, I think, declined to play the field on top of their deck. Knowing about the Massacre Worm. I've got multiple worms here, so I think I'm okay playing one. And let them make some more zombies. Is that game over? It looks like it to me. Can even thought cease to double check. Yeah, and two massacre worms means double the damage from the zombies dying, so. Massacre Worm, as it turns out, pretty nice answer to Field of the Dead. And reasonable hands. Could be another field deck, but I'm probably just curving out this game, so let's Thought Cease turn one. Alright, never mind. It's a banned company deck. Night of Autumn is kind of a nightmare against all our artifacts, so that's annoying. Do I just take Charming Prince to throw off their curve, so Extinction Event can name Odd. And then just hold the Tome until after? Maybe. Because the Scry 2 from Charming Prince is maybe going to help them find a company. Taking one Night of Autumn when they have two is kind of pointless. And then I'm not going to play Tome into Knights. Yeah, they might also want a 4-powered Knight to enable Ronos. So we'll wait for those to come into play before we do anything else. Alright, I guess now I can Thought Seize the other Knight, maybe. Seems fine. And hope they play Ronos, which walks right into my Extinction events. Even though Ronos can't attack, it's still a creature in play that dies to Extinction events. So it's a bit different from the more recent gods that only turn into creatures when a condition is met. And then I'm happy just scrying a land to the top. So no need to scry again. Take our draw step first. And next turn we can Golos, maybe get the Cataracts for the first time. Acquisition could also get Graph Digger's Cage to stop company. I guess I don't hate a Lantern to go with Golos, and then I can get a Swamp instead. Sure. And then next turn I should be able to go Lantern into Acquisition. Take it from there. Bugler, nice. Might find another Knight of Autumn. Finds a Charming Prince, that's fine. Let's cry too. If they keep a card on top, it's likely Collected Company, or they're just gonna flicker the Bugler. Makes sense too. Finds another Bugler. Alright, Pono's kind of going off there. Don't need a second Lantern. 
So I could scry, or I could just take my draw firsts. Play Lantern. I could activate Golos 2 here. That seems reasonable. Or I can Acquisition. What am I acquisitioning for? Ugin probably seals the deal. Um, so maybe I just activate Golos, because I could just hit a Ugin with Golos. So let's cry first. And maybe we can put an Ugin on top. Well, triple acquisition. So one is getting an Ugin, one is getting maybe a cage to stop company. And that should seal the deal. Sweet. So against mid-range company decks, we also have a reasonable game plan with our sweepers. And our surge engines. Alright, that was a pretty nice performance of our mono black control deck. Against a variety of archetypes, including some of the more popular ones in Historic. But for now, I want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.